he had been there three or four weeks previously. And when we were doing shift report that day, um, I had a coworker just casually say, he looks like poo. No, no, he looks like shit. He looks like poo. And um, I don't know if she really meant anything too derogatory in nature about that, but to say that to this man um, who I went to see later on that day, he was a meth addict. He had meth mites all over his body. He had a super pubic catheter. He was so sick and so anxious. And he asked me, he said, how long have I been here? I want to see my daughter. And I looked in the charts to see when he was admitted to the ED. And I said, it's about four days ago. And he said, um, can I see my daughter? I want to see my daughter. Um, and I said, well, how old is she? Um, she's 23. And um, this man didn't look old enough to have a 23-year-old daughter. And um, I looked on the charts to see if that was accurate, if she had a daughter on file. And um, indeed, he did. And um, this man was 39 years old. So you can imagine in the context of empathy, becoming a father at 16 years of age and the repercussions of living that life. Who knows what his pressures were, his responsibilities were. No 16 year old is ready to embrace fatherhood. But because of his meth use, he became paranoid, which is a common side effect of long-term amphetamine abuse. And so to counteract the paranoia, a lot of these people um, get addicted to um, to benzos as well, to um, Xanax and um, Ativan. And that is what happened to me all those years ago. I saw this man with his gown draped loosely around his thin frame and said, can you hold my old IV pole so I can walk to the bathroom? And I saw him, I saw his legs, and I saw his body and such an overwhelming feeling of shock and the realization that I had seen those scars before and I knew right then and there I was an advocate because he let me see him I saw myself in him I've never injected drugs into my body. I've never smoked a pipe. I've never drank alcohol. But it does not change the fact that my body is riddled with the scars that look just like him. And because I know of a certainty that I am worthy. I know that despite my addictions, even the thoughts that are pervasive when I am sober, that I am worth it. And because I know that I'm worth it, I require no other form of knowledge than to know that everyone else who thinks as I do, who feels as I do, who looks as I do, is worth it. In the hospital, we measure our I's and our O's, our inputs and our outputs. It is a vast critical way to assess 
a diagnosis, an illness. We can test on so many different levels. We are trained to respond to what goes in their bodies and what goes out of their bodies. We are not trained to diagnose or condemn a patient or belittle a patient behind his back by judging what he decides to put into his body and what comes out of his body. That is not our job. Yet, the reality of our world, it's still there. It's very covert, but it's still there. 